Hey everyone, how's it going? I wanted to make a very quick intro because the channel recently reached 500 subscribers. So I wanted to give a huge, huge, huge thank you to everybody who subscribed, whether you've been here since the beginning or you recently joined, thank you. Thanks also to everybody who likes and comments on the videos. I really appreciate that. Back from Vegas, I had the time of my life for my first World Series of Poker. Can't wait to go back next year. And I'll probably be back in Vegas uh, before then. In this video, we're back on home turf, back in Portland, going to Deuces to play a tournament. And then uh, we're also going to jump into some cash game action with some Hold'em and some Drama Hub. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and comment. I read and respond to everyone. It really means a lot. Without further ado, let's jump into it. In this first hand, we're at the 400 big blind level. I'm in the small blind with queen six offsuit. Action folds to me, and I decide to just complete here and the big blind checks their option. We go heads up to a flop of three queen ace with two hearts. I check, the big blind bets 600, and I call. The turn is a jack, I check again, and the big blind bets 2,000. Never really sure how to handle these blind battles, but I think second pair is a little too strong to fold at this point, and I feel like the big blind is just trying to push me around. I make the call with plans to reevaluate on the river. The river comes the seven of hearts, completing the front door flush. I check with the intention of folding to any decent sized bet from my opponent, but they check back and announce they have a queen. Time to see who has the biggest one. That's what she said. They show queen deuce. I was ahead the whole time, but the river counterfeited my six kicker, so we are going to chop this one. Disappointed with the chop, but happy with my read. A nice little confidence boost to start off the tournament. A couple of levels go by before I pick up a playable hand. We're at the 1000 big blind level. I have 6000 in my stack, and I look down at a playable hand indeed, pocket kings in the small blind. Even better, there's an open to 4000 from one of the most active players at the table, and then the cutoff 3-bet shoves for a little over 10,000. A dream spot for me to triple up, I call for my remaining 6,000. Action is back on the low jack, who calls the cutoffs all in. We go 3 ways to a runout, and I am up against pocket jacks and ace jack. The flop comes 9-8-4 with 2 diamonds. Turn is a 6. River is another 9. I get a full triple up, and now I have a playable stack. Another few levels later, we're at the 3000 big blind level, and I pick up pocket fives in the cutoff. There's an open from the low jack to 8000. With four big blinds in my stack, I have an easy three bet all in. Action falls back to the low jack, who makes the call with ace king. Happy to take the flip here, let's go to a run out. The flop comes 466 six with two clubs, turn is a 10 of clubs, and the river is a three, and I get the full double up. Shoving and surviving is the name of the game tonight. We're now at the 6,000 big blind level when I get dealt ace king off suit in the cutoff. Action folds to me. With 20,000 in my stack, there's only one thing to do, and that's to go all in. Praying for someone to make the call, but everyone folds and I pick up the blinds. Good enough for a 50% increase to my stack. A few hands later, I look down at king queen off suit from under the gun. I open shove for 29,000. Everyone folds, and I pick up the blinds. Chipping up, getting close to the money, let's go. The top three spots are getting paid, and we are five-handed when I pick up pocket deuces in the cutoff. The hijack limps, which is really odd at this stage of the tournament where everybody is relatively short-stacked. I don't mind picking up some extra debt chips, so I raise all in. Action folds back to the hijack, who doesn't snap fold, which I don't really love. With pocket deuces, the very best scenario I can find myself in is a flip, but I would happily take the pot down right now without putting my tournament life at risk. My opponent hems and haws for a few seconds before finally deciding on a call, and they show queen nine off suit. I think this hand should have found its way into the muck preflop, but here we are anyway. Let's go to a run out, let's hold. The flop comes nine! Shout out to all my German speaking friends. Five king nine rainbow. Turn is a 3, river is an 8, and I bust 2 from the money. GG, let's jump into some cash game action. I get a warm welcome to the cash game table by picking up pocket jacks in the cutoff. Action folds to me, I open to $10, and the big blind is the only player to make the call. Heads up to a flop of king 7 5 with 2 diamonds. Not the worst flop in the world for jacks. Big blind checks to me, I see bet for 10 bucks, and they snap fold. In this one, we join the action after the low jack opened to 10 bucks. I make the call from the hijack and the button and big blind come along. 
four ways to a flop of jack-5-6 all hearts, which is not the best flop for my specific hand as I'm holding pocket fours. If you're the overly optimistic type, I guess you can say I picked up the flush draw. Action checks around on this monotone board. The turn is interesting. It's a four. I turn a set. Other than a slow played flop flush or 7-8, which turned to straight, I think I have the best hand. There's plenty of hands I can get value from, like ace-jack, king-jack, or any hand containing a big heart. I want to charge the other players to see a river, and I set the price to 20 bucks. The low jack, who is the original raiser, announces a call for the vlog. We go heads up to the river, which comes to six diamonds. Boom! A river of boat. The low jack checks to me. I bet 50 bucks for value, but sadly, they fold. Next hand, we join the action on the turn. Five players, including yours truly, saw a flop of 5-4-6 all hearts and action checked around. I'm in the big blind with queen 8 and the queen of hearts. The turn comes a beautiful 7 of clubs, giving me the straight. The small blind checks. I bet 10 bucks. Action falls back to the small blind who makes the call. The river is a brick. The small blind checks again. I fire for 20 bucks and the small blind folds a 3 face up to the amazement of the table. What? You fold a 3 for $20? I love this game. In this one, I look down at ace-queen offsuit in the small blind. There's an open to 15 from under the gun. Under the gun one calls and action folds to me. I guess both 3-betting and calling are fine, but I want to give myself a chance to take this one down pre-flop. I know the under the gun one player most likely flat called the raise a little wide, so if I can get through the under the gun player, I should be able to pick up the pot. At 3-bet to 55, it looks like only half of my plan comes together as the under the gun player makes the call and under the gun one folds. We go heads up to a flop of 9, 7, 10 with two clubs. I'm not really sure how to navigate the spot here. I block aces and queens. My opponent would have probably 4 bet with kings and I hold the ace of clubs. So the hands they would most likely continue with facing aggression would be pocket jacks, pocket tens, maybe some hands like king queen, king jack, queen jack of clubs. The problem is, I think this constitutes a pretty large portion of their range when they open from under the gun and call a 3-bet preflop. So in a way, I feel like c-betting into this already pretty large pot would be a little bit spewy. With all that in mind, I check and my opponent checks back. Let's see if I can pick up some equity. The turn is the 3 of diamonds putting 2 flush draws on the board. I don't think this is a great card to bluff on, so I check and under the gun checks back again. The river is the deuce of spades. I briefly consider putting out a bet to try and take the pot down, but I'm not really sure what story that would be telling and I feel like I'm going to get hero called a lot. I check one more time and my opponent announces ace king. Now I'm pissed I couldn't pull the trigger on the flop, although I think this particular player may have found a call and with the way the rest of the board ran out, I don't think I would have fired a second or third bullet so in the end, I probably saved myself some money. Alright, let's shake that last hand off, and what better way to do so than by getting dealt pocket aces in the hijack. There's a limb from under the gun, I raise to 15, and I don't get 1, 2, or 3. No ma'am, I get 4 calls. My pocket aces suddenly don't feel as strong as we had 5 ways to a flop of 6, king, 9, rainbow, and under the gun checks to me. I want to thin out the field, so I throw out a c-bet of 40 bucks, and I don't get one, two, or three. No, sir. Everybody calls. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I still get called by the cutoff and under gun though, so still not feeling super comfortable as we go three ways to the turn, which comes another six, and once again, under the gun checks to me. Well, that second six showing up makes it less likely that somebody flopped a set of sixes. There's 197 bucks in the pot, and I have $190 behind. If somebody's got a set of nines, well, they're about to take all my money. I shove, the cutoff gets out of the way, and I don't get snap called by under the gun, which is fantastic news. They ask for a count, and now I'm praying for a call from a hand like King Queen or King Jack. After thinking about it for a little bit, under gun throws in a chip for a call. The river is a nine. I flip my aces, and they are good. Let's freaking go. It's been a while since I picked up a nice pot. Maybe. Maybe I can finally book a winning cash game session for the vlog. In this next hand, I pick up a local favorite that we like to call the Portland Nuts, Queen 10 of the suited variety. Action folds to me in the hijack, I bump it up to 12 bucks and I get calls from the cutoff and the small blind. Three ways to a flop of ace, five, three with two hearts. 
The small blind checks, and I think this is a nice spot for a C bet as I can represent the ace, and I have the flush draw in case I get called. But I check. And the hijack checks as well. Still three ways to the turn, which comes to deuce of clubs. It does bring a possible straight, although it's unlikely any of my opponents are holding a four. The small blind checks again, and this time I decide to take a stab for 40 bucks, hoping to take the pot down. The cutoff has different plans though, and raises to 115. The small blind gets out of the way, and so do I. In this one, I look down at queen jack suited on the button. The cutoff opens to seven. I decide to three bet to 25 in position, and the cutoff makes the call. Heads up to a flop of three, five, four, one spade. The cutoff checks, and I check back. The turn is the five of spades, giving me the flush draw. The cutoff checks, I bet 30 bucks, and they fold. Let's wrap up this session with a couple of hands of Dramaha. Stick around, check it out, and maybe you can start introducing this game in your local home game. Quick reminder on how to play Dramaha. You get dealt five cards and you are playing two hands. Five card PLO, so you're using two cards from your hand to make the best five card hand on the board, and five card draw, where you're trying to make the best five card combination in your hand. You have the option of drawing up to three cards before the turn card is dealt, the pot is often chopped between the winners of each hand, but it's also possible to scoop the entire pot. Let's jump in. All mixed games are played as either three or five dollar bomb pots, meaning every player in the hand gets to see the flop. Here the flop comes eight, ace, ace, rainbow, and my hand is currently ace, jack, nine, seven, six. So I flop trip aces on the board, and I don't have much going on for my draw hand. Action checks to me, I bet 10 bucks, and the big blind is the only player to make the call. It's time to draw. The big blind draws two, and I decide to hold on to my ace jack and draw three. The turn comes to deuce of hearts, and the big blind bets 10 bucks. My hand, after drawing, is now ace, king, queen, jack, five. Almost a straight in my hand. As it stands, I only have ace high, but I still have trip aces on the board. I make the call to see if I can hit a full house on the river. The river comes to 10 of diamonds, and the big blind bets another 10 bucks, which is a super small bet. I might lose to a full house on the board, but with trip aces and a king kicker, I can't fold for that price. I call, and the big line announces kings down in their hand, so I have the best hand on the board with trip aces, we chop the pot. In this one, I have jack 4, 3, 3, deuce, and the flop comes 10, 9, 9, rainbow. Not much on the board, but I do start with a pair of threes in my hand. Action checks around, and it's draw time. I decide to hold on to my pair and draw three. The first card I draw is another three, nice. I also draw a two and a five, so now I have trip threes in my hand. The turn comes a six, putting a second club on the board. I bet 15 bucks and I get called by the low jack and the button. We go three ways to a river, which is a 10. I decide to exercise some caution against two other opponents. I check and they both check back. It's kind of irrelevant to my hand, but the low jack checked with quad nines on the board Worried that the button might have quad tens. That's pretty crazy. Anyway, they're going to take down the Omaha hand and I take half the pot down with my trade threes. One more hand for the vlog. I start with ace, jack, nine, six, four. The flop comes six, seven, jack with two hearts. So I flop two pair. Typically not a hand strong enough to lead out. So I check and action checks around. Draw time. I decide to hold on to my two pair plus the ace and I draw two. First card is the three of hearts. The second card is the ace of hearts. Interesting draw, which gives me aces down and the nut flush draw on the board. The turn is a break and the action checks to me. I make a questionable bet of 25 bucks. I think my hand is good enough for a check call at best. And the under the gun player is the only one to make the call. Heads up to the river, which is the three of diamonds. Under the gun checks and I decide to check back. My opponent announces 6-7 for a flopped 2-pair, which loses to my better 2-pair, Jackson 6s. And my pair of aces is good enough for the draw hand, so I actually scoop this spot. Let's go! This brings an end to the session. I bought in for 300, cashed out for 535. With the 40 buy-in for the tournament, this brings the total for the night to a profit of 195. I believe this is my first time booking a profit in a cash game for the vlog. Hopefully this is the first of many. Thank you so much for watching, good luck at the tables, and I'll catch you in the next one.